Hi. Um, anybody who doesn't speak Italian here? So you just have to excuse me for one minute, right? So I think this is a good chance for me to practice my Italian. <clears throat> Nel mezzo del cammin di nostra vita, mi ritrovai per una sala oscura, che la diritta via era smarrita. Ai dir qual era e cosa dura, il javascript selvaggio, e aspro e forte, che nel pensier rinnova la paura. Tanto è amaro che poco più è morte, ma per trattare il ben chi vi trovai, dirò delle altre cose chi vo scorte. Io non so ben ridir come vi entrai, tant'era piero di sonno col punto che la verace vi abbandonai. Ma poi chi fu al pie di un elmo giunto, là dove terminava quella valle che mi aveva di paura il corco un punto. Guarda in alto e vedi le sue spalle, vestite già dei raggi del pianeta che mi ha dritto altrui per ogni calle. Allora fu la paura un poco cheta, che nel lago del cor mi era durata la notte che passai con tanta pietà. Ok, I have to... So, so for who uh, like doesn't speak Italian, this is the uh, beginning of a very famous um, book. <laughs> a book. Yeah, you can read it. It's called The Divine Comedy. It's not too long either. It's like... Um, but yeah, um, and the story was about, uh, you know, you're in the middle of your life, you meet this beast, which is JavaScript, and you feel horrible, and only death is worse than it. And then at some point you meet Elm, and there's like a light of hope in your life. Um, okay, so the talk is about that. Um, and just wanted to ask, um, everyone who has done a little bit of JavaScript, like raise their hands. Very good. No, 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 keep it raised. And anybody who has never seen undefined is not a function, uh, no, wait, keep the hand up. If you have never seen undefined is not a function in your code. Okay, very, very well. So um, what I'm going to do today is to um, just like play a bit with Elm. And hopefully, I can show you why it's cool. I mean, at least in my opinion. Um, and we're going to build something that generates things like this. It's not like proper Mondrian, but you'll have to excuse me. Uh, I think it's good enough. So um, we're just going to do that together and code the whole thing. So I've hooked up like this little repo, and there's um, Elm package JSON where I've installed some dependencies. So nothing like too complicated, mostly core, HTML, and some like random things. And there's also um, an index HTML where I've added some amazing job like CSS. Please feel free to use border box whenever you like. Um, and this is the Elm source. And I have a command here which is called uh, mlive. And mlive, you just pass the source, which is the um, Elm code. You output Mondrian.js, you open it in your browser, and we're going to run in debug mode. So when I run this, it just like opens in my browser. You can see hello world, which is the thing we have on the left. So let me just move this here. Um, just quickly do some magic. Um, and here, like everything is hooked up with live reload. So if I do uh, no slides conf and I save, you see it just like loads up automatically. And there's like not much configuration you have to do, just works. Um, you'll see like there's like this weird thing, which is like the Elm inspector. Um, we'll see like what it does later. But, um, I think it's quite cool. Um, have you ever used Elm or Ascal before? Okay, so not many people. Uh, I'll just like, explain quickly how to create a function that adds two numbers. So I have to add, takes x and y, inside does this, okay? And also in Elm, there's this idea of writing a type signature. So like you're writing the types that uh, your function is taking, and there's like a slightly weird syntax. You're saying you take an integer, then you have an arrow, it says, uh, okay, so this is the first parameter, then you have another arrow, and then we have the last thing, which is the return value. 
Okay, so you grab an int, take another int, return an int. So the return value is always the last thing. Oh, by the way, feel free to interrupt me whenever there's something which is not clear, if you can't see anything. If it's too cold. Um, okay, so if I do this, um, let me just quickly do this, and I'll just do something like add one and two, and I'll save. Now see, uh, the Elm compiler tells you the left argument of plus plus is causing a type mismatch. Oh, in this case, it's because it's trying, I'm passing text, which is coming from HTML, and actually saying you're trying to concatenate some HTML with these numbers, and it's not good. And this is because I need to add parentheses around the whole thing. Um, now, this is the error I was expecting, which is uh, you're trying to do plus plus, and the right side should be a string, but the right side is an int. Uh, I think like one of the main things I like about Elm is like how good the error messages are. Right? It's exactly telling you like what the problem is. You don't have to decipher something using you know magic. So basically, it's just telling you okay, you, like this thing needs to be a string. So we're just going to convert it to a string. Save it. Boom. And uh, one of the things that Elm people say is that whenever it compiles, more or less, it always runs. So we'll open the browser every once in a while, just like to verify that our code works. But as good functional programmers, we just don't care if the real world works. Just like, we just care that the compiler works, right? Very good. Um, so we created this add function, and this is the way that you define functions in Elm. Um, so I was thinking maybe you can just you know draw some squares or something. So I'm going to import a div, and uh, here I'm just going to call a view function, okay? And I'm going to say that the view function uh, is something that emits this message. I'll explain later why you have this HTML message. It's something that has to do with functional programming being pure and whatever not. Um, but we just create a div. The first list is about styles. We don't care about that yet. And then I'm going to create another div, um, which is going to be um, empty. And then I'm going to create this other div. It's a lot about div creation, like working with HTML. Um, and now I want to show you something that, like the code no now looks like garbage, right? You never write code like this. Um, but there is a program which is called Elm Format, which will just like take your code and automatically format it. So you don't have to care anymore, like, to write the code in the right way. I usually just write garbage, and then Elm format goes around, like understands this code, and like formats it like, in a really nice way. Um, so here I'm just going to add something else, which is um, a style. And I'm going to say that I want this to be uh, width um, 100 pixel. No, this is not the way you write it. 100 pixel. So like most of this talk is just writing CSS. So yeah. <laughs> if you don't know CSS, it's good. For all the rest, not so great. Background uh, color, and we're just going to say red. Oh, I, I failed something, of course. So I need to add another thing here, and then the code from garbage becomes beautiful again. Um, so, OK, of course, now we have to debug some CSS. Why it's not showing up? Can someone help me? No, I really don't understand. Uh, style? Oh, yeah, style. Oh, actually, I have to write the error. Thank you very much. So, cannot find a variable style. Um, and it's because style is an HTML attribute, so you have to import it separately. HTML attributes exposing style. So now we'll actually take a look that the Elm compiler works. The Elm compiler works, we see the red thing. Yeah. This is not very exciting, right? Um, but I think it's quite cool just like, you know, just to show that we can actually build code that does something. Um, something I would like to do is just like to start writing some types. And usually when you have a view function, you pass something which is called a model. And the way to define these models in Elm is just to write either type or type alias. In this case, we'll use a type alias, which is um, basically a map. So I say inside has a greeting, and the type of the greeting is string, okay? And now I'm going to pass, um, I'm going to call it initial model, 
to this thing. And the initial model is going to be a model. Initial model. And the greeting is going to be hello, and no slides count. And here we have to change the type signature to say that it's going to take a model. I'm going to emit some HTML message. I'm going to take the model. And here when I'm doing this text, I'm just going to say, well, actually just, um, I understand. Oh, and I don't know. I can't use game apparently. Oh, because it was in the okay. Model dot greeting. Okay, cool. So it compiles, it runs. Okay, and uh, most of the things in Elm, they're just functions, right? So the fact that we're trying to write a web app doesn't change the fact that we have functions, and the function takes some arguments, emits stuff, and the way that this thing works is uh, quite simple. Um, so if we go back to what we wanted to create, what we wanted to create was something like, uh, no, not like this, this is a Haskell book. What we want to create is something like this, right? So uh, I was thinking maybe a very simple way of um, doing something like this is just to think of this as a table, right? You have a lot of rows, and each row has some cells. And maybe now for simplicity, you can just imagine that uh, the heights and the widths are going to be constant. So we just have to decide them at random at some point, and then we can just display them, right? Um, so I was thinking maybe we can just like try to write the types, right? So we have a model, it has a greeting right now. Maybe we just want to add uh, a board. I'm just going to add it like this. And now I'm going to ask myself what is a board? And a board is maybe a list of rows, right? So I can just li write list row. So I think this is like very similar to the Bible when God tells Adam just to give names to things, right? So you just, yeah, I'm just going to call this this. It doesn't really matter. Like, they don't, this, like, these things don't exist. But as soon as I give them a name, I can use them. And it usually just, like, helps me think about, like, what I want to do. So here I want to say what's a row. And I would guess that a row has a height, which might be a float, because we're dealing with, like, CSS percentages and whatnot. And then we have a list of cells. And what is a cell? So uh, a type eight is cell. It's something that has a uh, width, which is uh, maybe another float. And we have a color, right? Um, so what type should be the color? Very good. What is a color? Ta -da. Sorry, it was just for added dramatic effect. So uh, as I said, uh, you can either have aliases or you just have like normal types. And the type usually it's uh, what the Elm guys call uh, um, union type. I think like in the literature it's called the algebraic data type. So I'm, feel free to correct me, I, I don't know anything. Um, and you can just say we have colors, for example, white and red. And we can just like run this. And something that like and you can say, we just like did this bunch of things. And the Elm compiler immediately says, oh, look, you're calling initial model, and you're supposed to return me a model. But the thing that you returned is greeting string. You forgot to pass something. Looks like a record that is missing the board field. Can you imagine this type of error in JavaScript? <laughs> that wasn't a joke. It was a well, yeah. <laughs> um, but so if I wanted to do this, I could just do board and just pass something like an empty list of rows, right? I save this, boom, it compiles, okay? I, um, like, I know now like, nothing is being done, but I know that my app runs like, didn't change at all, right? And this is, I think, is like, the main feeling that you get when you're working with Elm, is that you, know, you don't have to hope. Like, a lot of times when you're writing JavaScript, you're, have to be like so careful and so like disciplined. You have to be like this sort of like ninja that sees everything and you know remembers everything. No, I'm, it's true. But like I think like we're at the point in the story of the human race when computers can do a lot of things, and I think computers like could help us writing better code. Um, and this is the end of my uh, of my moral. Um, okay. So we have these rows, and this is pretty cool. 
and we're doing this view model, and this is pretty cool. Maybe now, actually, I want to do something like slightly more interesting. So I'm just going to uh, quickly cut this um, from here. I'm just going to call a function which is called view board. And I'm going to grab the board from the model and just like type it here. And I'm going to call view board. The view board takes a board, right? We gave it a name, so now we can use the type to describe that. And we take a board, we take a board, and inside here we do what I pasted before, something like this. I think this looks uh, reasonably good. Uh, I don't need, um, I don't know, I like the greeting, so maybe I'll just like put it here. Um, something like this, will this work? Um, I think this looks good, let me try to save, okay. And inside here, basically I have this board, so I'm just going to do a list map. So I'm just going to run a function, which is view row on the board dot rows, okay? And as I did before, basically every time I'm just like building upon things that don't exist, but that's fine. So I have a row, I'm going to emit some HTML message, and view row is going to take a row. And what I'm going to do here, I'm, I think I'm going to do something very similar. So there's like, will be a, like a div with some style, and I don't need this anymore. Um, but in the case of the row, I want the thing to expand to like the maximum width, but the height will become something like uh, row dot height plus plus um, something like this. And the background color, I'll just remove it for now, right? So this is the row, and then we can do for each cell in the row, we can just do a list map view cell row cells, okay? If I save this, we'll see that um, well, first of all, there's no view cell, and also I forgot to wrap this with um, uh, parentheses. So the thing you have to learn when you're writing Elm to use parentheses. Um, yeah. View cell, cell, HTML message. View cell, cell, mm -hmm. start pasting some random HTML again. Okay, thank you, it's there. And in this case, I'm going to say that the height is going to be 100%. Because in this way, the height is controlled by each row, and each individual cell just controls the width. And in this case, we're going to do something like um, cell width um, plus plus, something like this. And in this case, I'll just like leave the background color to what it is. Okay? Uh, and you see, like, I made some mistakes, but I did it on purpose. You have to trust me on this. And I just did cell width plus plus, and I knew this was a float, but I tried to append it to a string, just like to, you know, to show that if you make mistakes, it's not a big deal. Like, um, we can maybe create a function which is called CSS percentage, and we're going to replace this with that, and I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, CSS percentage, and the CSS percentage function is something that takes, um, float, I guess, and then it's a string. So CSS percentage float, and here we're going to do to string of, uh, this is not the way you write Elm, this is the way you write Elm. And I forgot again to do things. So wrap these things from inside. Uh... Okay, and it compiles, okay? So, I thought it was like pretty cool, and in this way we basically just like done like all the logic, and we know it's hooked up. Like you have to trust me on that. Like now you can't see this yet, um, but luckily I have created an initial model that we can copy and paste. So I'm just going to grab this. So when I said I was going to live code everything I like, <laughs> but you wouldn't want me to do this, so I just you know did it for you. Uh, oh no, because you see, it, like I, I tried to be fancy and I created like all these other colors in my code which are not defined in the color yet. So I'm just going to add them quickly. So I added yellow, um, I added green, and then I added blue. And if I save now, it should compile. And now if I look at it, you see, uh, maybe, right? Like something is there, but it's not great. So first thing I forgot to do is to, uh, is like some CSS, so which is like to float all these elements. And this should look better, right? You, you still can't see really what's going on there. 
It's because we're just like creating background, right? Um, but I'm just going to add the quick uh, border. Um, one PX solid black. And you can see, oh, this looks okay, right? Um, and maybe just because like we're really good at, job, uh, at CSS, we can, instead of using PX, we can use this amazing thing which is uh, viewport ratio something. So uh, we want the 90% of the view width and we can use 90% of the view height. And this looks pretty good, right? Um, one thing is that it's all red. Like, like if you look, uh, no, it's still Haskell. Uh, if you look this and this, yeah, close enough. But the reason why like this doesn't work is that we just said background. Uh, no, well, probably this shouldn't be there either. Um, but it's the problem is here, right? So I'm just going to write a simple function which is called CSS color and pass the cell color. Uh, color. And I think at this point, like all of you can do the same thing I'm doing. I'm just like the code monkey at this point. Um, so you pass a color, and you're going to emit a, very good. And you take CSS color, and takes a color. And now I'm doing is just to say, it's a case, so color can assume a lot of values. And when it's white, I'm going to emit uh, white, okay? Um, and if I do this, uh, I want to show the error message, which is so cool. This case does not have branches for all possibilities. You need to account for the following values. Red, yellow, green, blue. Add branches to cover each of these patterns. If you're seeing this error for the first time, you, there's, the, there's the link to actually learn in the language. I don't know. Can you see the same thing happening in JavaScript? I didn't think so. Um, and I think that's like, like you don't have to be stressed out anymore, right? Like you, if you're just like going to forget something, like the compiler will catch it and will say, well, you, you fucked up, mate. Um, that needs to be edited out. Um, I also like wrote the rest of this function. So just to say that if it's, you know, these other things I'm going to save, it compiles, open the browser. This is not the browser, I'm sorry. That was like oh, too exciting, right? Uh, this is the browser, okay? So basically, we like wrote a bunch of code and we almost like never look at the browser. Like as soon as it compiles, we're pretty sure it works. I'm just going to quickly add the border to the whole thing as well. Just paste it there. Okay, so I think all this is okay-ish, but it's not really super exciting. And therefore, we have 25 more minutes and the 25, in this 25 minutes, we're going to actually write Elm code that generates like these tables in a random fashion. If you have done functional programming, this is the oh moment, because functional programmers hate random effects. Because uh, there is, a, I was like reading the Elm book, and there's like a really nice quote here, which says, uh, the word purity in functional programming is sometimes also used to mean what is more properly called referential transparency. It means that the same function, given the same values to evaluate, will always return the same result uh, as they do in math, right? And if you think about something that works randomly, that's the completely opposite of that, right? Like you're throwing a, a dice. It's not supposed to return the same things. If it returns the same things, it means the dice is rigged. It's like, it's not good. Uh, so usually it's always like a bit of a pain to have like these sort of things. Um, at least like if you, if you just think about writing a simple function generates random stuff as you would do in JavaScript, it's just quite hard because the, the Elm is a pure language, right? So um, also I'm going to take the chance to close the Haskell book. Very good. Um, and I just want you to remember this, that all these functions right now that we wrote are pure. Like every time you pass them something, they always behave in the same exact repeatable, trustworthy way, right? Um, and also the program that we wrote, this main, it's just a view function. It's like, this is not an HT, like it's not a real program, just a view function. It's like saying that React is a framework. Uh, 
Um, okay, so let's actually write a real program, a, a program that you can like, click and do stuff, right? So I'm going to wave my hands like a bit magically now and say that this is something which is called a, like takes like this very special type of thing. Don't, you don't need to know. I don't know what it is actually. I just like write it. It works. The compiler doesn't say anything, so I'm happy. And it's going to take an init thing which uh, returns an initial model which we have and what is called a command. And right now we don't really know what to do, so I'm just going to use this special thing which is a, a command none. And then we have a view function, and guess what? This is the same view function that we created. We're going to have an update function, which we don't have yet. And there's also this idea of subscriptions. And these subscriptions is going to be none for now. So you can like, you know, look it up on your own. And uh, we just like, let the compiler help us, and the compiler tells us, look, you idiot. There is no update, there is no message, do something about it. So I'm going to create a type, which is called message. And I don't really know what the app is gonna do, so I'm just gonna say no op, just don't do nothing. But just, this is just like a placeholder. I want to give it names later, but right now I'm just gonna say, yeah, don't do nothing. And I'm going to create an update function that takes a message, takes a version of the model, and then returns a new version of the model and a command, which is tagged in the same way. And here we have a message, we have a model, and in this, in this moment, we do the same case. We say case off, and here we have to say the options. This in case is like no op. And right now, I don't really want to do any change, so I'm going to return the same model and return none as an action, okay? And this thing compiles and it works, okay? So it just like did the same thing. Like before, we just like wrote more code to do the same thing, so now it does cooler things, I hope. Um, and I was thinking maybe some way just like to show you like in theory of what's going to happen. It's like I would like to click this text on the top and make it change the greeting, right? So basically I'm going to do, like here I have a view function somewhere that uh, in, like displays this, uh, I can't find it anymore. Hello, here. Um, oh no, it's, it's calling uh, the greeting now. Right? Okay, awesome. And here I'm just going to say uh, on click, um, change greeting, right? And if I save, the compiler will tell me, well, look, like these two things don't exist. So I'm going to import HTML uh, events, exposing on click. And change greeting is actually a message. So it's like an action I want my app to be able to handle. So basically, I need to add it like here in the type messages. And if I save it now, the compiler will tell you two things. Uh, one is that the type annotation for view says it always return lowercase HTML message, but the return value is capital case. And this is because when you say something like lowercase, you're saying that this thing can emit any type of message, but the compiler realizes that, well, maybe I can just read the text. Your type annotation uses variable message, MSG, which means any type of value can flow. Your code is saying it cannot be anything, though. Maybe change your type annotation to be more specific. Maybe the code has a problem. I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm just going to change this. Fine. And you change it, and uh, uh, it's, I don't know. Uh, did I save? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, no, I changed it in the wrong place, of course. So see, like, the compiler is never the problem. Like, the problem is between the keyboard and the chair. And it says, okay, the case does not have a branch for all possibilities, of course. And I have to go back and say, okay, there's this change greeting action, and in here I want to do something. This is the syntax for updating a record. So I'm going to say that greeting is, Elm is pretty cool, okay? And this is the new version of the model. So if you're like familiar with like Elixir or something, this is like very similar. Or I think a lot of like functional programs have this sort of pattern. You have the old version of the model. There's some action that changes something, and then you emit this new version of the model. And by the way, every data structure in Elm is um, uh, is immutable. So it's always returning a new version. You cannot uh, overwrite what's going on. Okay, and this thing compiles, right? And we go over there, we click, it works, okay? Um, now I said we're going to take a look at the history, which is pretty cool, because now in the history, 
there's a list of all the actions that went through. Oh, maybe you can't see. I can't make it bigger. Okay. Um, maybe there's some like accessibility shortcut you can use. No, not anymore. Um, wait, wait. It's HTML, right? So I can just like. <laughs> that's like the beauty of HTML. You can just screw up everything. Font sites. Just put 30px. Yeah, look at that. Um, and you, you see, like this is like everything that's there. And if you want to open one of the lists, and this is like the whole data structure, right? we just like wrote everything ourselves. But now we can see that we received this changed greeting action. And this is a new version of the model. Elm is pretty cool. And originally used to be um, something else, I think. Uh, I'm just going to close this. So, um, and this is like the normal flow of what happens in Elm application. Well, you can see, like I call it application. It's, I find it very simple. Like it's the same pattern that was like um, used in Redux, for example. So this is where uh, it's coming from originally. Um, the advantage that I see over using something like Redux is that you don't have to use immutable JS. You don't have to be careful. Like everything is handled for you. So you, you don't have to be, you know, um, you can be lazy. I like being lazy. Um, okay, cool. So what I wanted to show with this is just like the flow of actions and updates and whatever not. But I still didn't tell you how to do the random number generation. So I'd like to show you um, an image, first of all, of like how the random like, number generation is going to work. This is really good. Um, so, and this is basically what we're going to do. And as I said before, like the random part is usually the complicated things. So the solution that Elms gives you is that your code is always going to be pure and functional and it's going to be always, uh, you know, return the same things. But of course people need to do this sort of random operations and therefore inside the Elm runtime, there is the possibility of like doing these impure actions. So the, the Elm runtime is the superhero that protects you from the darkness of the world of mutability. That was pretty good. Um, okay, so I'm going to need to import a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to import a library called random, which is in core, another library that I um, installed, which is called random extra, and I'm going to also import some extra helpers for lists, okay? And actually here I'm going to expose a thing called generator, and I'm going to quickly explain what it is. And here I'm going to expose um, constant and uh, frequency. Okay, cool. I think we have everything we need. We save, it compiles. Um, so basically, ultimately what I want the program to do is to start generating a new model when the apps boots. So right now the first command is none, but I actually want to tell him, well, you know, just generate something. So I'm just going to talk generate board. I'm going to say maybe nine by nine, something like that, right? And usually I like to write this like after the update. I'm just going to say, uh, okay, this thing is a generate board, right? And if we think about the type, it takes an int, it takes another int, but what does it return? It returns this idea of like tagged message, which is something like this. And then we're going to say it takes like the number of rows, the number of columns, and here we have to dress the rest of the OAU. Um, so there is an idea that in order to perform these complicated operations, you basically describe what the operation is, and then you trust that the Elm runtime will do the right thing. So for example, like if you wanted a random int, right, it would be a generator and that returns an int, and this random int would be something like this. You do random int, and then you pass two numbers. So in this case, the number is going to be between 10 and 100. And the Elm runtime will make sure that this random operation has been performed. But that's what I mean when I say that you're not running the code yourself. You're describing what you want the code to do, and then the Elm runtime does it. If you think about it, it's not that different from when you write you know, a normal programming language, which is not assembly, right? Because you're always telling the machine what to do, and then some point else the machine is going to do it. 
Like you're never running the code yourself. Like stop you know, lying to yourself. Um, you're always like telling something else that the computer is going to do at some later stage in some sort of way. And this is just a way to express this sort of idea. And what I do want to do is to, the end result is to be something like this. So what I want to do is to generate a certain list of uh, heights for the rows, a certain list of widths for the cells, and then for each one of those, I want to generate a random color, right? Um, so this makes it a little bit more complicated than you need to be, needs to be, but I'll still do it. So just follow me. Uh, it's going to be 10 minutes of coding, and then we're going to look at the browser. Um, so we're going to create this thing which is called the heights generator. And we're going to do a random list, which creates a list of random values. And we're going to create one for each row, and we're going to use a random int. Okay? I'm going to do copy paste this, widths, and here it's going to be calls. Okay? So like in this way, you describe that you need like, these two different random operations. But in the end, I want to have a single random operation. So there is a way to say, so I'm going to call this pair generator. And I can just take random pair and pass the heights and the widths. So this thing will combine like, the, these two random operations into a single one. OK? But the thing is now I want to do these like, recursive like, random operations. Because I want, like, I've generated all the heights and all the widths. And now I want to generate a random color for every one of the combinations right, of the cells. And usually it means you need to go through again the Elm runtime. time. You don't, you don't want to do that. You just want to describe the whole thing you want to do right now. So there is an upper, uh, a thing which is called and then. Um, OK, cool. So I'm going to call this like, oh no, uh, rows generator. And it's going to be, um, I'm going to take the pair generator. Uh, this is a pipe operator, like in Elixir or F sharp, right? And I'm going to do random and then. And this is the beauty of like Lisp languages, a lot of parentheses. So you grab all the heights, all the widths. You create this function. You try to close it. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to mess this up, but that's fine. And inside here, inside this random and then, in this line 91, is basically when we know that the random operation will have resolved. We actually have real values there. Like this is where we're unpacking the magic box that uh, we were talking about before. Right? So we have these heights and we have these widths. And I was thinking that basically we can describe each one of these rows as like one of these like random operations. So I can take all the heights and uh, for each one of these heights, I'm going to map it to um, a single height. Okay. Um, and here, for each one of these height, I'm going to create something like this. It's uh, before we saw map two, which is like this way of like creating like two things. But there's like there's map until seven or eight, I think, in Elm. So I'm going to do a map uh, three, okay? And I'm going to give this a name right now, which we don't haven't like expressed yet, which is called random row. And this thing is going to take three random values. One is going to be a constant, so I'm just going to write constant height. One is going to be another constant, which is going to be uh, the width, okay? And the third one is going to be the random colors, right? So now I can do random list again, and can do for any, everywhere on the columns, I want to have random color, okay? Um, yeah, so in, in this way, we constructed this random row object, which we haven't defined yet. So I'm going to define it here. It's going to be another tape alias, random row, uh, row, which is height, which is uh, int in this case. We have widths, which is going to be a list of int. And then we have colors, which is uh, a list of color. Uh, this one, okay? And in this way, at the end of this row generation, random operation, we'll have this list of random rows. But at that point, with these rows, we can actually build the board, which was like the original thing that we wanted, right? So uh, we're just going to call this a board generator. And here we're going to say something like, uh, we're going to take the rows generator. 
and I'm going to run a command which is called map, which is like to transform like the inside. Well, we've seen it before, but if you if you've, like watch like the talk in this room, if not, we're transforming a type from another type. So we have a list of random rows, and we're going to pass it to the function build board, okay? Um, and I'm just going to say in, uh, and this is the way in uh, to basically from all these like future things to generate something that we can send it up again. Like before we did change greeting, and now I'm just going to say a new board, and I'm going to pass this board generator, which is a single random operation. If I save this, maybe we can let um, the Elm compiler help us a little bit, right? So basically we can see that the errors is, are that we, can't, we don't have random color, we don't have build board, we don't have new board, okay? So we can fix them like one by one. So the first thing is to fix is to do random color. Uh, we did a generator of int, we're going to do a generator of color. And this thing, we're going to use this helper which is called frequency. And frequency is a helper, you can just like specify distribution for your values. So I'm going to say 10, 10 times return the constant which is white, then one time return the constant which is red, then one time return the constant which is yellow, then one time uh, return the constant which is green, and one time return the constant which is blue, okay? And this thing will do exactly the right thing. Oh, if I can save in game. <sighs> okay, so now the errors are just two. We, we just don't have build board and we don't have new board. So we're going to generate a new board. So we're just going to add it in the list of messages. So this is um, new board and it's going to take a board this time. And whenever we're, we receive a new board, we can just basically uh, set it in our model. So we're going to do something really similar, model equal board, board, and still I, we don't want to do any action after this. And this should solve, okay, so now we just have one failure, which is build board. And build board basically, as I said, it's something that transforms a data type in another data type. So I'm just going to type uh, the code signature. Um, maybe actually I'll, uh, I won't bore you with the details. I've read, like, wrote some of this before. So I'm just going to copy it. So done, draft. And I wrote something for build board. And I'm just going to show the, the type signature, right? It's like it converts a list of random rows into a board. And it does this, like, in some ways. You don't need to care too much about it. Uh, it's just two methods. Um, okay, let's save this. And there's an error here, it says, and then is expecting the argument to be a generator, but it is a list of generators. You don't really need to understand what's going on. Uh, it's just that it's saying that we return a list while we should be returning a single generator. And it's related to the, the thing I said before that in the end we just want a single generator, but here we're doing a map on the heights. So there is a very simple way to fix this, which is to use a function which is called combine which takes a list of generators and just return a single generator. Um, and if I save this, it compiles, okay? So we made like all, we wrote like a bunch of code in the last 10 minutes as it promised, right? And this is the result. And I don't know if you ever managed to know write other front-end scripting languages in this way. I'm not going to say the name, but you do 40, it just like creates like a bunch of this, right? No problem. Um, something I want to show in the last five minutes is that it would be nice if we could just like click on the thing and let like regenerate a bunch of like new things. So basically I'm just going to create a new message, which is um, regenerate, regenerate board. And inside this regenerate board, I'm going to do uh, regenerate board, and I'm going to take the same model. I'm just going to emit a new command, which is generate board 4040, right? And now, like I've wrote like the back end of the code, right? I need actually to add a button somewhere. So here, when I'm doing uh, view something, view board, yeah, like here we have the styles of the board. I'm just going to add another on click, on click. Uh, regenerate board. 
And you'll see that the Elm will compile again, like will, will, will like complain again, saying that the view board function was supposed to be generic, but it's actually emitting a very like precise type, which is my type, the capital letter message. So I'm going to fix this. Um, it compiles, okay? It compiles, it click. Okay? It compiles, it works. Not only that, but using um, the, the power of the um, Elm debugger, you can go back in time. So this is like the last version, and I'm going back in time into all the previous versions of the random boards, okay? It's not gone, like it's always there. And the reason why this works is because the data structures are, in, are immutable. So like, there's no like snapshot functionality or anything crazy. You have like you have like a drawer where you have like all these like different things. You just yeah, I'm just gonna revert to this, no problem, right? And also, if I want to resume, I can just like keep using the app again. Uh, and you remember some point we did? Oh, if you can click this, it will work, and it works. Um, it's pretty cool. And then you, you can see that if I migrate between these two versions. Like the, this one and this. Oh, and maybe you can't see because it's too small. Uh, oh, no, I have to resume now. Otherwise, like, it will block the UI. Oh, wow. Okay, now I broke it, really. Um, but if you go back, you can see that inside the model, it changes from hello on the slides count to um, it's pretty cool. And let me fix this. Oh, no, I have to resume again. Oh, no, I don't want to save it. Thank you very much. Okay, that's it. Questions? Or, okay. okay, we have time for a couple of questions. Of course, the Elm compiler generates JavaScript. Is yes. it compatible with other JavaScript modules written in JavaScript? Um, yes, yes, it, it, it is compatible. Uh, also, like um, the, let me just show you quickly. Uh, you don't need to run the Elm app as a full screen app. You can just like embed it into a div. So, like in theory, you can just like you know embed it like in your React app or Sometimes, like we have apps where we embed a bit of React inside the Elm app, so it's just JavaScript, so it runs. Um, the problem is usually you tend not to try to put too much JavaScript in your Elm code because then it just like ruins all the all the promises, right? All the guarantees that the system has are lost. But yeah, it, it's just JavaScript, so it runs everywhere. And if you if you want to take a look at it, you can just open the uh, the like the compiled version. Uh, so it's just Montreal JS, and you can see actually like all the crazy Elm code. Like, it's a lot of code, but it's like fifteen thousand lines of code. It's like all the language built in JavaScript. Yeah. Other questions? Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah.